I had I struggled with it too, but I kept, as I usually do, trying to find what was positive. Mm-hmm. One of the things I really liked, as you were talking about, he was circling back to like um, finest moment. I liked that he used the word bewilderment over and over and over and over again. And by the time we were into the book, it was humorous to me that that word kept coming back over and over. I liked how he would define a word. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And like he would say a word and then mm-hmm. define it because clearly this book is written for a younger person. So he was using sophisticated language yeah. and defining it in a creative way that was interesting. And I thought for a good reader like Georgia, that's got to be really interesting. Now you've increased your vocabulary reading mm-hmm. this kind of, you know, kind of a stream of consciousness type book. So I really liked that. I agree with you. I thought it was very well written, but uh, you know, I'm 52. <laughs> I was like, where's the poison? We could have gotten to the poison chapter two. I need to know where this poison is. And I don't really, the whole time I kept thinking he's, he's definitely not poisoned because he'd be dead. <laughs> so he's talking too much. So he, the, the mm-hmm. cat's out of the bag. He's not poisoned. This is about his inner thought process, stream of consciousness. And um, you're right that there is a lot of similarity between Tom Robbins, though, because Tom Robbins books are always very philosophical. They go on a lot of tangents, mm-hmm. wacky characters that go on a lot of tangents, um, deeply philosophical, clever, very like funny, um, witty and funny. And this is I like I think it's sort of more. a, uh, It's like philosophical humor if I were to mm-hmm. categorize it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yes, it's written for a younger audience, but it's not a kid's book. No, it's so it's very, I don't know. It's a very specific. Type yeah. Of book. And a little confusing. Cause as mm-hmm. I was reading it as I was like, well, I wouldn't read this aloud to a kid and a kid would have to be a pretty sophisticated reader to yes. read a lot of this language and to understand mm-hmm. the nuances and the, what he's right. talking about and where he's going. Yeah. Cause when you think about a book that is maybe written for a younger audience, you assume a level of like ease mm-hmm. and it's not an easy book no to read because it does sort of you know he just goes on all these tangents and it wasn't yeah. easy that's why I right. switched I think audio that's book. why like because it's not a start to finish story mm-hmm. like it's, yeah it's hard to follow it, it is hard to follow mm-hmm. that's why so I switched I you're right yeah so as I was reading it I kept rereading pages over because I did couldn't remember what I read and then I'd read I mean, I just finished reading Wuthering Heights. I think I'm a pretty good reader, (laughs) you know, as far as readers go. And I kept going, wait, wait, what did he say? Wait, let me go back and read that one more time. Wait, what was that? And then I was like, well, it's going to take me forever to read this book if I have to reread it. So I'm just going to listen to it. Um, That's funny. I kept reading. I'd be like, okay, I'm going to read a chapter. Okay, eight pages. I can do eight pages. Let's see. Nothing. Eight pages. And then I'd be like reading and reading and reading and be like, oh my God, there's still five 